Oh, this is socially triggered. And this video is going to be on the dangers of privilege. Uh, privilege as a concept. Um, so one of the things that communists, communism tries to strive for is complete egalitarian. The goal is often you, you hear of the redistribution of wealth, uh, equality, you know, they try to fight against things like income inequality. They often fight against all forms of inequality. Um, and the way that communism tries to achieve these goals of equality is through um, making all people the same. The goal is if all people are the same, then we're all equal. <laughs> you know, it's pretty simple that way. And one of the ways of achieving this is you can break down the different groups. Okay, you have them kind of fighting against each other, and it breaks them down. Uh, often what they'll do in com when they're trying to achieve communism is they'll find a scapegoat. Uh, in the case of uh, most communism, it's capitalism. Capitalism is the blame for all the evils in society, <laughs> and that's the way that they can you know, encourage people to take a communist or socialistic uh, viewpoint. Another thing that they do is demonize the rich. If they, why did those people have so much money and I do not? Um, another thing that they'll do is pit workers versus uh, the capitalists as a way of saying, oh, the workers are oppressed and the capitalists are the ones doing the oppression. <laughs> and these are all things that they do to, um, again, pre prepare the, the groundwork for, cap for communism. Another goal is if you can get rid of that group, you just eliminate it, then in theory, the way uh, cap uh, communism should work would be that all the workers redistribute all that wealth and they divide it equally amongst themselves and they don't need somebody telling them what to do. They just do their jobs and they all work together. They all work equally hard and they achieve some communist uh, utopia. And one of the things that they do to demonize the other groups, and it's a really easy kind of tactic, is to say, okay, well, those people that are rich and have all this power, well, they only have that power because they are privileged. They have uh, something that they didn't deserve and that they have stolen from you. And that's, that's, generally the concept behind how privilege is used by the by the left nowadays that they that people who have something that they didn't earn they don't deserve and that they've taken it from you so what happens with the whole concept of privilege if you actually look at the concept of privilege from a purely dictionary level <laughs> Privilege just means that you have an advantage. That's really all it means. And that advantage could come from biology. You're born stronger, healthier. Um, it could come from lineage, like hereditary, that you come from a wealthy family and you come from a successful lineage, uh, where, for example, somebody born in North America has a huge advantage over somebody who was born in Africa. And that is a form of privilege. And there's other privileges as well as uh, education. Uh, and there's uh, access. So if somebody's born in a city where they have lots of different amenities, uh, they will have advantages over somebody who's born in a very rural setting where there's maybe not the opportunities that are in the privileged uh, city life. And there's a whole bunch of different types of privilege. Um, often nowadays, uh, the left will create things like white privilege. And the concept is this, it's a very racist <laughs> form of privilege that they've created. The concept is this, that as a white person, you have an advantage over other people in this society, uh, other non-whites. Well, if you think about that, if you from the very basic uh, concept, you know, as I said, it's an advantage, the concept of privilege. 
Well, basically, it's saying white people are superior to everyone else. And we know that that is bogus. <laughs> we know, you know, it's, that's a very racist thing to say. Um, I mean, it's great to be white and all. I'm not downplaying whiteness. Uh, I, you know, I like being white. Uh, just like I think anyone likes being the race that they are. Um, so one of the things is, though, with, with this concept is it creates a couple really big dangerous things. Well, first, as I said, this is all about achieving this communist <laughs> utopia, which we know how it always ends out. Like how many more millions of people must die before we realize that this is not going to work. Um, but that's that's not the danger I'm talking about. Uh, a big danger is this. If you say white person, hey, white person, you have privilege. Now, generally, the goal of that is, first of all, to shut that white person up. They can't speak because they're privileged and they didn't earn that privilege because the only reason they have that privilege is because they're white. They're just inherently got that privilege and it's unfair that they have it. Okay. Now, the goal is to shut them up, not allow them to talk. And the white person uh, will respond by saying, well, no, 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 I, I'm not privileged. Um, I'm just like you. I, you, know, we, we, you know, we're all basically the same. Uh, and they'll, they'll almost take a communist point of view where they'll say, I'm the same as you, and we're all the same, which is kind of a communist way of thinking that we're all equal. So it sort of achieves that communist goal because the white person doesn't want to seem like they're just born to advantage. <laughs> Because they, they feel like they, you know, just like anyone else, they feel as if they've earned what they have attained in life. Uh, you know, if they have a nice house or they have a car or whatever it is, they feel that they've earned that because they worked to get that, just like anyone else would feel. Also, um, they might not feel <laughs> that they have, you know, may, they might not have the car or the house or the whatever. And they might say, well, where is this privilege that I'm supposed to have? I, I, I'm poor, just I'm more poor than you. <laughs> and, you know, my whiteness didn't help me any. And that's the real thing. So what ends up happening is uh, white people that are being told that they're privileged feel like they have to defend their whiteness, like that, that they have to defend the fact that they are white. And that is a form of racism, first of all, but it's, it, what it does is it makes people defensive about who they are. So one of the things that, you know, it's, it's very unfair to say, okay, because you are white or black or brown or whatever you are, that we have determined that you are evil, that you're a bad person, just because of that. <laughs> And this is what the word privilege is being used as, as an attack, where people become ashamed of the of who they are. Now, it's a double-edged sword in this case, because not only are they saying that these people are privileged and therefore have some advantage, unfair, unearned advantage over everyone else, but what happens is the double edge comes from the fact that now everyone else feels, hey, because I'm not white, that somehow I'm inferior, I'm disadvantaged, and it's unfair. I have to work twice as hard. They always say that. I love that. You know, they always say, you know, whenever they talk about black people, they always say, oh, a black person has to work twice as hard. And it's just not true. It's, you know, we all have to work hard in society um, in order to become successful. It's just, it is what it is. Um, so... Nobody has to work twice as hard. Uh, there's no super advantage to being white um, in this society. Actually, this society is pretty good about creating opportunities for all different groups. In fact, there's many opportunities that are given to other groups that are non-white, which is kind of bogus. I actually don't like that for multiple reasons. I'm, I'm going to quickly just do an aside here that what happens is if you give uh, some group an advantage over the others, 
just by the mere nature of them being a woman or black or whatever, um, that in a way is super unfair to the group that originally created the society. <laughs> so if it's if it's North America or China or Japan or Korea or Africa, and all of a sudden those places are giving um, the minority, you know, and it could be a very small minority. Like if you look at like Japan, it's like 98% Japanese. If they give the minority huge advantages or any advantages over the majority, what ends up happening is um, you're dis you're disadvantaging your <laughs> your your populace. Your your the goal of any state is to support the most people within that state, and that's um, to me a real problem that's happening with this whole um, you know it, you know affirmative action and special special grants and, and privileges that are being created for. Uh, for minorities, I really don't think that's a good way to go because you you should within any society support your local people first. You know, support your nation. However, it is what it is. It's that's what's happening, um, and a lot of white people when they defend themselves against white privilege, this whole concept, uh, they they quote they they mention that they say, hey, look, <laughs> as a white male, I have very little advantages compared to somebody who is a female and a minority. They have so many incentives. You know, there's more positions open for them. A lot of companies will do what's called diversity hiring. And it's, so it, not only does it create this feeling of um, resentment towards themselves, that they feel like, oh, because I'm white, I'm being demonized. <laughs> It also creates this whole thing where the white majority might kind of resent not only for the fact that they're being demonized, but resent the minorities for the fact that they're getting advantages over them. And then being told that they have the advantage of, you know, because they have this white privilege. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of... Um, it's a great way to divide people. And that's, to me, the, one of the biggest dangers here. It's one group is being set aside and demonized, and the other groups are being put, a, you know, uh, put, put in a situation where they see them as evil. And both groups uh, are looking at each other with like negative, negative viewpoints. Uh, the, the minorities are looking at the white people and saying, oh, they're privileged and they didn't earn it. The white people are looking at the minorities and saying, well, geez, why are we being demonized? And why uh, are these privileged people that have all these advantages and that have come into our countries where we've welcomed them in and they're complaining about us instead of assimilating to our culture? So there's that kind of dynamic. And it, it only, it's, it's, it's only going to create hostility between the two groups. And that's, to me, one of the biggest uh, dangers of this whole concept of privilege. Now, to me, uh, another big uh, danger of the whole concept of privilege, and this is a huge danger, is, again, I'm a very strong advocate for against equality. <laughs> I, I, I do not like equality. I do not like the concept of equality. I do believe that people are different. <laughs> And some people will succeed in life. Some people will fail. And that's just life. It is not fair, but life is not fair. <laughs> and we shouldn't deny reality and uh, uh, try to make everyone equal. It just won't work. I do believe that you know we should incentivize people that are the, the ones that are the brilliant minds within our society to produce more and to be successful. And if we can incentivize them through more material success, then so be it. Like if they become super wealthy, I'm fine with that because they can contribute the most to our society and that can really make our society a better, better place for everyone. So I don't mind if somebody gets super, super rich like uh, Bill Gates or uh, Steve Jobs because in the end, <laughs> they, they bring these great technologies that help so many of us have better lives. So to me, uh, 
uh, I don't mind that non-equal uh, society. Um, so when it comes to privilege, my goal is to actually generate privilege. I want people to have privilege. And what happens is if you demonize the word privilege, then you're basically undermining the whole uh, success motive. Because I, I feel that it's very important that people seek privilege that w and they give that privilege to their children. And that's super important. So the goal of attaining privilege and as many privileges as you can is to better yourself. Uh, so you can attain those in many ways. Like um, one, you can attain it from your biology. Like, you know, if I'm stronger, faster, or smarter than somebody else, I will use those natural advantages that I have to uh, succeed in life. And that's a good thing. You know, you should use the talents you have and you should use those advantages you have, those privileges you have uh, to benefit yourself. Um, if I come from a wealthy family, then I should use that wealth uh, to, you know, get a good education, to, to do whatever I can to improve myself. And I expect that from everyone. It's not a, it's not a race thing. It's, 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 it's using privilege in a positive way to better oneself. It's a very individualistic way of thinking that we should use our privileges to better ourselves so that we can better society. So the goal ultimately is to make individuals strong so that they can make the society strong. Uh, the idea is this, that if you see society as a, a chain of uh, people all interlinked, you're only as strong as your the, the, weakest, the weakest link in that chain. So the goal is to privilege everybody <laughs> and to get them so that they can be stronger and therefore the society is stronger. So you got, but at the same time, you got to realize that not everybody is going to take advantage of their talents or uh, the advantages of our society. And there, there's going to be weak links. It's just life. Um, so the point is we have to understand that privilege is not a negative thing. And we shouldn't demonize this word because it, it really undermines our society because people will not, you know, they'll, they'll stop trying to seek uh, that privilege. And I think it's a good thing to achieve as many privileges as possible and to be proud of the privileges that you have. If being born in North America is a privilege, then you should be proud of that privilege because then you're proud of your, of your society. Uh, and, you know, then you're more likely to want your society to succeed. <laughs> so, you know, if, if I think, hey, being born in Canada is a good thing, uh, then I'll be proud of my society and want my society to uh, succeed. And I will want Canada to be a strong, healthy country. Now, if I, if I don't see being born in this country as a privilege, I won't have as much um, patriotism or I won't see the value in my nation. And once people lose that concept of how important their nation is, then their whole nation will collapse. It's, it's really important for us to maintain that sense of pride in ourselves and in our nation. And um, I, nowadays I see that those two things are really getting demonized. Um, What's happened often, and this is another aside, but it's really understanding how privileges are work, working. Um, people are very individualistic in the way that they think, but the way that they're thinking is instead of thinking about how they're like um, how they're great. Okay, they want you know you, normally people try to become great. They want to be better than what they are. Instead of thinking that way, which is a good way of thinking. Um, they often think in a way which is very detrimental. They think in a way that, oh, how am I oppressed? What is my disadvantage? Why, why am I so bad? <laughs> and they, they think in those ways that, and that undermine uh, their sense of worth. 
and you get a demoralized people. And you don't want people to be demoralized, you want people to be happy. And that's the big problem with communism. It demoralizes the people because they all become like, there's nobody that's, you know, we all are special in our own way. <laughs> I mean, that sounds kind of cliched or whatever, but, um, but at least we want to be special to ourselves. That we feel that we have worth. And when you, you lose that sense of worth, you really lose your sense of purpose and you get depressed and you don't really feel like there's any reason to continue. And that's what I see is happening right now, that, that people are losing that sense of drive and purpose that gives their lives meaning. And I don't want to see that. I want people to be successful and I want people to be happy. Um, and I want people to uh, focus on how can they make their lives better and how they can contribute more to the greater society as a whole. So this has been my thoughts on privilege and the dangers of uh, the way it's currently used as a negative and how it's being demonized in our society at the detriment of our society. We, we have to remain strong and vigilant against this wave of socialist and communist ways of thinking. We have to fight against the, the concept of equality. We have to fight against the concept of interpreting privilege as negative. And we have to fight against this whole narrative of people being offended and people being uh, weak in terms of their concepts of <laughs> that <laughs> they really don't see themselves as uh, a strong individual. They see themselves as being an oppressed individual. And that's a really, really bad place to be. We got to get people out of this oppression narrative and get them back into how can I be stronger? How, how can I be better than that other guy? Um, and that's where we really need people to be in their mind, in their way of thinking. And like the worst thing is to think that you're oppressed and that it's unfair that you're oppressed, that, it, that, that the dice are stacked against you, the game is stacked against you, you know, that you have to remain strong. And even if the, you start out life with disadvantages, you got to find what you, your strengths are and use those strengths to achieve the greatness that you want in life. We all want a certain level of greatness and we have to focus on our positives, our privileges, in order to achieve those uh, goals of having a better life. So um, this has been Socially Triggered. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video. Please uh, give me comments, like, and subscribe. And check out my other videos. I, you know, I try to talk about things from a different viewpoint. And I hope that my ideas at least provoke thought <laughs> and um, get people thinking about these topics. And, you know, I'm not always right. Oh, I'm mostly right. <laughs> but, you know, I'd like to hear people's opinions, you know, what they have issues with. And I can, I always like to learn from others. So please give me that feedback. And I enjoy hearing any comments. So thank you. Thanks for watching.